Tillis is recognized from North Carolina. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Is that because I wore a tie today? It was why. That's <laughs> right. Um, thank you all for being here. What research has been conducted to, uh, you, you were talking about uh, maybe a lot of the Russian consumption being at the price cap, possibly negotiated below it, but what are going to be the, uh, the biggest changes in terms of consumption? What, what countries, who are the top three countries that are likely to greatly increase their dependence on Russian oil over the next 12 months? Senator, thank you for the question. The European Union has decided in its six sanctions package to stop the purchase of Russian oil and refined product, and that will take effect in December, December 5th for, for oil. So the several million barrels that Europe has been purchasing will flow elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Generally, that may include countries in Asia, uh, Africa, Latin America. There's not one single country or two that would carry uh, that would take on all of it. It will likely be a, a, an array of countries. Um, <clears throat> would China and India top the list of some of the greatest increased consumption? Those are significant consuming countries for Russia already. It's possible that it could increase uh, additionally there, but the volume of flow that will come uh, from Russia, given Europe's pullback from the market, will flow to many countries. So do you think the price cap alone is enough to get the price where we want it to be? Um, or is there going to be a need for secondary sanctions so that we go beyond the U.S. and the G7? The price cap, we believe, will have a powerful effect in doing several things. Certainly, in the first instance, denying Russia revenue. Uh, to fund its war. And secondly, by keeping Russian oil on the market at lower prices, it will reduce the, the potential for price spikes in the market. It enhances security of supply. It makes affordable energy available for lower income countries. All of those things are important benefits to a price environment that's good for our economy and our partners' economies. The um, Russians have uh, Putin made a, a grave mistake when he went into Ukraine. He's seeing that play out on the battlefield. We're talking about tens of thousands of casualties, probably 25,000 deaths. Um, now we also know that their supply chains have been greatly disrupted. Their ability to replace a lot of what they've lost on the battleshield has been greatly disrupted. And so they're going to countries like North Korea and Iran to look for um, support uh, I believe that's already in violation of sanctions. What more do we need to do to curb that and limit Russia's options outside of their own indigenous defense industrial base? Senator, it is certainly a violation of sanctions when pro then, uh, entities uh, in Iran or North Korea supply Russian designated entities with um, military equipment. So, for example, earlier this month, uh, the Treasury Department imposed sanctions on Iranian entities that were supplying UAVs to Russia in violation of our Russia sanctions. And our approach here will be to continue to impose sanctions to hold accountable those suppliers to Russian designated entities. Are there any in the works now based on transactions that have already occurred? Senator, I'm not in the position to uh, forecast or speak about sanctions that may be coming, but please rest assured that this is a significant priority for us. Um, I think there's a estimated, is it $300 billion in Russian assets that have been seized by the United States? Senator, I can respond at least in part. With respect to seizures, that's, that's correct as it- Are frozen. Frozen, not seized. Thank right? you, sir. It, there is a yeah. distinction. Now, the, the question is, how can we seize them? Uh, and what legal hurdles do you have for doing that? Thank you, Senator. So it is the department's, one of the department's priorities to look at the assets that are close to hand and, and most readily investigatable. Those include assets that are frozen in the United States. We have a focus on looking at whether those relate to the proceeds of crime or have been facilitating money laundering. What's in the world, the what, what is the worldwide uh, number on frozen assets and have any of those in other jurisdictions been seized? Uh, Senator, the, the estimations of 
uh, the total number range into the, the billions. I don't have a precise number to, to offer. There are foreign partners who have certainly frozen assets abroad, um, and in at least some jurisdictions, there are authorities that may ultimately lead to seizure and full confiscation, much like our civil forfeiture and criminal forfeiture. Well, I for one hope we put on the uh, foot on the accelerator and do everything we can to make sure that that money never falls back into the hands of the oligarchs. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, sir.